Uh, I was like if I want to go to yeah, I went by Shim, y'all was shot. The one who our apostles and elders the great millstone. So you take your students to see the brothers pushing the way I put the four points work. This is what we'll get to today about before other comes from humiliation. Hey, this is on um, Joel um, 1 and 10. And it states, um, but he said unto her, now this Job speaking to his wife, thou speak it as one of the foolish women speaking. What shall we receive good at the hand of the Most High? And shall we not receive evil? And all this did not Job sin with his lips. Verse 11. Now when Job's three friends heard of all this evil that was come upon him, they came every one from his own place. El Eliphaz, the Temanite, and Bildad, the Shuhite, and um, Zophar, the Naamathite, Na Na for they had made an appointment together to come to mourn with him and to comfort him. Verse 12, And when they lifted up their eyes afar off and knew him not, they lifted up their voice and wept, and they rent every one of his mantle and sprinkled dust upon their heads toward heaven. Verse 13, So they sat down with him upon the ground seven days and seven nights, and none spake a word unto him, for they saw that his grief was very great. Y'all want to respond on this? Yeah, so basically it was um, it's talking about how Job actually went through all this hell, man. And he had some friends that basically came there to, you know, to check on and see basically how he was doing. But when they witnessed, you know, the distress and all of um, 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 the afflictions he had went through, then basically they were um, distorted. You know, in the spirit, they, they were vexed, man. You know, but hey, at the same time frame, he was... Um, humiliated before he was um, glorified. And to prove that point, I'm just going to get right to the point. This is uh, back in Job, and it states um, Job 42 and 12. So the Lord blessed the latter end of Job more than his beginning, for he had 14,000 sheep and 6,000 camels and a thousand yoke of oxen and a thousand she asses. He had also seven sons and three daughters. And he called the name of the first Jemima, and the name of the second Kizia, and the name of the third Kurun Kapuk. And all in the land were no and all in the land were no women found so fair as the daughters of Job, and their father gave them inheritance among their brethren. And after this lived Job in hundred and forty years and saw his sons and his son's son even for generations. So he ended up in more abundance than, than where he began. God. And because it's a saying that they got, they say, when people lose it all, they lose it. That's right. Now for a man upon planet earth to this day, for him to lose everything that he has that everyone has known for, known of him to have or known of him because of his great possessions, because of his beautiful family, That's right. you know, and for all that to be taken away, that's humiliation, man. That's right. And because now you, you, you uh, really don't want to go face to face amongst these people because now they know of your situation, they know of your grief, they know of this evil th that has befell you, and that brings forth humiliation. But in order to be exalted, you have to, 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 to go through a low point. You have to be abased. You have to be brought down real low, you know. So that's what the you know saying the brothers' topic is going into. Mm -hmm. It becomes. And because uh, before you can be exalted, you have to be humble. God. And humble goes, you know what I'm saying, to, uh, they can be utilized as a, uh, synonymously for, for humiliated as well. Because this work and labor of the Lord, it could be uh, a so-called act of uh, humiliation. Because the because the world look, look, looks at this as strange. Because they know you, and now you're reading the Bible. They know your history, know your past, they know your current, and then what we wear. We are here in the cold, you know, on the street corner, hollering and spitting and talking. This can be embarrassing, you know what I'm saying, to a certain degree, you know. But 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 the Lord has uplifted that spirit of fear from us because we, because we know the end result, and the, the end result is that the Lord is going to exalt us. So right now we're living that 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 that, that humiliated a, a, a base position. 
Because we, honestly, we don't really care what other people think, man. Right. Exactly. What we know, what we doing, that's something beneficial to the nation of Israel. You know, and this First Corinthians one twenty one. But after that, in the wisdom of the Most High, the word by wisdom knew not the Most High. It pleased the Most High by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. It just shows you how we we are a spectacle, man. You know, so we pretty much looked at as bums. Or losers on this side, but pretty much those else gonna turn into spiritual devils. Just let you see your phone though. That's cool. That's cool. Uh, Proverbs chapter 15, verse 33. The fear of the Lord is the instruction of wisdom, and before honor is humility. <laughs> So pretty much, hey, that shows the ultimate balance of the Most High, man. He'll take you down, and you stay um, faithful to him, you maintain your integrity, he's going to bring you right back up, he's going to bless you double time, man. So that's pretty much the position that we in. We at a low state right now. But we can, hey, we're going to continue to serve in how about Shalom Shah, the truth sincerity, and he'll bring us back up. I'll bring it real quick in the match here. And this is 2nd Ezra 79. If this city now were given unto a man for an inheritance, if he never shall pass the danger set before it, how shall he receive this inheritance? Well, basically, the city is actually talking about the kingdom of heaven, man. And it actually talks about, like, the trials and tribulations. Like, on one side you had water, on the other side you had the fire. Okay, but it, it's so narrow that only one brother can go per time. Uh, well, only one brother can go at one at a time, man. So at the same time frame, getting to that city, you're going to be humiliated, man. You have to get through this valley of shadow of death in order to get to that city. Yeah. So it goes into that same balance. Mm -hmm. That's the one. Yeah, that's that straight gate that you know, each brother has to take in this path, man. That's right. And that straight, that goes into a position of difference, right? So it wants to put different type of, you know, um, you know, curses on us, but like I keep uh, reiterating, if we stay faithful to him, man, we're going to overcome that. Right. right. Oh, this is the book of Proverbs, chapter 18, verse 12. Before destruction, the heart of man is haughty, and before honor is humility. There it goes again. Before honor is humility, man. Mm -hmm. You can't say it uh, more, man. It's, hey, you bring us down a low point, you're going to bring us right back up. Mm -hmm. Hey, this is uh, Matthew 27 and um, 36. And sitting down, they watched him there and set up over his head his accusation written, This is Yahweh Shai, the king of the Jews. Verse 38, Then were there two thieves crucified with him, one on the right hand and another on the left. And they that passed by reviled him, wagging their heads and saying, Thou that destroyest the temple and buildest it in three days, save thyself. If thou be the son of the Most High, come down from the cross. Likewise, also the chief priests mocking him with the scribes and elders said he saved others himself. He cannot save. If he be the king of Israel, let him now come down from the cross and we will believe him. He trusted in the Most High. Let him deliver him now. If he would have him, for he said, I am the son of the Most High. The thieves also which were crucified with him cast the same in his teeth. Now from the sixth hour there was darkness over all the land until the ninth hour. Forty-six and about the ninth hour, Yahweh cried with a loud voice, saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, that is to say, my power, my power, why hast thou forsaken me? Verse 47, some of them that stood there when they heard that said, this man called for your life. For the eighth, straight away, one of them ran and took a sponge and filled it with vinegar and put it on the reed and gave him to drink. All right, and the point of this, this part was basically the house I was on the cross, man, and he went through all that pain, all that affliction, and the humiliation to, uh, to save the, the entire nation of Israel, beginning with the elect. And that goes to show you that he was uh, humiliated before he was um, honored. And to prove that point, I'm just going to go into um, Revelation, the fifth chapter, and it states, um, and one of the elders said unto me, now this is John the Revelator, we not behold the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, have prevailed to open the book and to loose the seven seals thereof. Now it was Revelation 5 and 5, verse 6, and I beheld and lo, in the midst of the throne and of the four beasts, 
and in the midst of the elders stood a lamb as it had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of the Most High, sent forth into all the earth. And he came and took the book out of the right hand of him that sat upon the throne. Verse 8, And when he had taken the book, the four beasts and four and twenty elders fell down before the Lamb, having every one of them harps and golden vows full of odors, which are the prayers of saints. And they sung a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open, seal, open the seals thereof. For thou was slain and has redeemed us to the Most High by the blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation and has made us into our no power kings and priests and we shall reign on the earth okay so, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was taken down in a little moment he was crucified he was rejected by his own people you know and so by the after him you know you know girding up his loins like a man he's uttered now in the spiritual world so it's going to be physically manifested when we come back again the second time yeah, yeah. Hey, uh, I got real quick just to back here. Okay. Isaiah 53 and 3. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid as it were our faces from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. Surely he have borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem stricken, smitten of the Most High and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, he was bruised for our iniquities, the chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. Mm -hmm. So let's go to each and let brother, man. We're just going to start out with the elect. Each and let brother are healed through the stripes that Howard Shai had to go through on that cross, man. And it pretty much is going to trickle on down to the rest of the 12 tribes of Israel. But everything's going to begin with the elect. Those are the first fruits of the Most High. Got some for you. Uh, Philippians chapter 2, verse 5. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Yahweh Shai, who being in the form of the Most High, thought it not robbery to be equal with the Most High, but made himself of no reputation, and took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself, and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. He was about his father's business, man. Basically, he wasn't glorifying himself, although he had spiritual power and things of that such, but at the same time, friend, Yahweh I knew that he had to glorify the father, man, and then he would receive his glory. And he hasn't received his glory as of yet from his own, own earth. It's just set up in the spiritual world, but we all know through the spirit that first everything happens in the spiritual world, and then it trickles down on us. Yeah, those are the uh, this is uh, Mark 13, 13. It says, And you should be hated of all men for my name's sake, but he that endure to the end, the same should be saved. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you got to endure to the end, man. You have to endure those afflictions, the, the, the diseases, persecutions. the persecutions, and the humiliation, man. In order to get to something, you have to go through something, man. Uh, we, if we follow us up, you have a shot. We're supposed to be a sheep. He said he know his sheep, right? So, okay, so we ambassadors of you have a shot. We represented him. So the things that he went through when he walked on this planet Earth, we're going to go through the same thing, man. Right. So we got to have that in our mind, Frank. You have a shot. Our Lord Savior went through it, so we got to go through it, too. He girded his loins up like a man. We got to do the same thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, the book of Sirach, chapter 13, uh, verse 20. It says, As the proud hate humility, so doth the rich abhor the, the, the poor. And I brought that out because it said the proud, the proud hate humility, so the proud hate hate to hate to be humble. And they also hate hate people who come in that contrite country spirit. So that's another low point that you gotta go through because you got all these people who exalt their money over you, who exalt their degrees over you. Who, who, who wants to exalt the so-called Bible knowledge over you, you know, because they automatically rule you out instantly without you even having to break a scripture down. They just base it, base it upon you being insignificant, you know. So the proud, the proud abhor the poor. I mean, uh, the, pr the proud abhor the, 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 uh, the humble or those of uh, a contrite spirit, those with uh, humility, you know. And they add on to that humiliation because their whole, their whole scheme is to humiliate you and embarrass you, man. This is real quick. Matthew 19 and 27. Then answered Peter and said unto him, Behold, we have forsaken all and followed thee. What shall we have therefore? And Yahweh shall say unto them, Verily I say unto you, that ye 
and shall follow me in the regeneration when the Son of Man shall sit in the throne of his glory, he also shall sit upon twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. And every one that have forsaken houses, or brethren, or sisters, or father, or mother, or wife, or children, or lands, for my name's sake, shall receive an hundredfold, and shall inherit everlasting life. That's why y'all shall see that, you know, that the sufferings, well, really was Paul speaking through the spirit of you, how about you, he said the suffering of this present time not worthy compared to the glory which should be revealed in us, man. Right. So, I'm going to close out.